Do you know what hydraulic fracturing is and how do government and regulations fit into this equation? And I hope that after this assembly you can understand why I have gotten this urgency to get people aware, united, and involved in this issue. It is our job as citizens to be aware, ask questions, and be active, active in civic life. Uh, but it is also our job to help each other in these tasks. So here are parts of the documentary by Josh Fox called Gasland. Thank you. Okay, so the next question is, what can we do? Is it too late? Um, how can we stop this if we, if we can? Um, okay, so there are many organizations out there trying to help people take action against this. And one, and one that reached me was protecting our waters. They're here with us today, and without, without further ado, here's the member of the organization who introduced all of this to me. Please give a round of applause to Abe. Good morning. Um, as Michelle said, I'm just a volunteer for a civic organization based in Philadelphia here called Protecting Our Waters. Um, obviously, we have a problem here. Uh, what you saw was just 15 minutes of a 90 minute film, and I don't think it made clear exactly how much of a problem we have, even, even in Philadelphia. Um, everybody who lives in Philadelphia gets their drinking water uh, from the Delaware River and the Schuylkill River. Um, and there's, there are proposals to have this kind of activity, this gas drilling activity, start, happen, start happening um, in the Delaware River watershed. We live downstream, that means any wastewater that's discharged, and there are hundreds of millions of gallons of wastewater every year that are discharged, eventually will make their way into the Delaware River watershed, and uh, there's a good chance that uh, uh, so, some of these chemicals, um, also radioactive, naturally occurring radioactive material, um, could make it into our uh, water supply. So it's, it's, it's quite alarming, um, and we are doing everything we can to uh, you know, keep that from happening. Uh, we have letters to President Obama, we have letters to the Delaware River Basin Commission kind of that we're hoping you can sign uh, to help you know, prevent our water supply from being threatened. Um, so that's, that's my story. I would like to introduce um, kind of the person who got me involved in this. This, is, this whole issue has kind of taken over my life for the past six months or so. Um, the woman I'm going to introduce is Iris Marie Bloom. She is the director of Protecting Our Waters. Uh, this has been her life for pretty much the past two years. Um, she does it all on a volunteer basis, and here she is, Iris Marie Bloom. Thank you so much uh, for coming out and really paying attention. And uh, I really think it's important that Josh Fox made this film. And I wanted to let you know that uh, I've met Josh Fox several times, and he has driven all across the country and has continued to work on this issue. It's not that he just um, made a film and then he kind of went on with his life. It's, this has become his life, and that's the case with me. That's the case with a lot of people. Once you're touched by this issue and you realize they're doing what? And they, they got exempt from what? They got exempt from the Clean Water Act. They got exempt from the Safe Drinking Water Act. They got exempt from the Clean Air Act. They got exempt from the Superfund law. Do you, do you know what the Superfund law is? It's, it's a law that requires a company that creates a huge mess, a Superfund mess, a colossal mess, a toxic mess, to be financially responsible to clean that mess up. Uh, a lot of people say that every single gas drilling well pad and every single fracking pit, a fracking pit is also called an, called an impoundment, that's where they keep you know, hundreds of thousands of gallons of these toxic chemicals out of the open with a plastic lined pit that can evaporate into the air, birds can fall into it, animals can drink from it and die, and if there's a huge snowstorm or a rainstorm, it can just spill out. 
um, and also the plastic lining can get punctured, so the chemicals go directly into the soil. So that's why people say these fracking pits are, every one of them is a super fun site in the making. But a real super fun site would be, uh, the company would be responsible financially to clean it up, even though you can't really clean up this kind of toxic waste. But in this case, they're exempt from that. So it's really shocking. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a few more facts um, and then get to the what you can do part, which is my favorite part, because uh, we have this, uh, this thing called democracy and we've got to make it work. If we don't make it work, we don't get clean water. Clean water and democracy go together and that's where you come in. So I'm gonna update you just a little bit more um, and then tell you what we can do right now and, um, and take some questions and answers as well. So to update you a little bit more, since that film was made, more shocking facts have come out. I'm just gonna mention a couple. One, there is a congressional investigation right now on Capitol Hill of Halliburton and 11 other gas drilling companies that have injected 32 million gallons of diesel underground as part of fracking. Um, and that should have never happened. That should, diesel doesn't belong anywhere near water. Um, in many places across the country, Wyoming, Colorado, also in Pennsylvania, people are turning up with benzene um, and petroleum distillers in their drinking water, and it comes back tested and positive for benzene. Benzene is a terrible cancer-causing substance. Um, it shouldn't be anywhere near drinking water. So that's being investigated in Congress, and if you'd like to take political action or encourage your parents and neighbors and friends to take political action, please give support to Congress, um, to the U.S. representatives and senators, and tell them to, in, to do that investigation. Another fight that's happening right now nationally is that um, a lot of conservatives are attacking the Environmental Protection Agency and it's trying to take away its authority. And I think of it like this. The Halliburton loophole that uh, Josh Fox talked about that cuts off the authority of the EPA to regulate hydraulic fracturing is like cutting them off at the knees. And then there are other folks in Congress that are trying to cut it off at the head. They're trying to kind of take away its authority and take away its, thund its funding. So we want people to weigh in and tell Congress to uphold the Environmental Protection Agency and increase its authority to regulate water, protect our air, and to stop greenhouse gas emissions. Um, greenhouse gas emissions turn out to be 9,000 times greater, according to the most recent EPA study, than they previously thought from this gas drilling. So I don't wanna, um, well, it's a very overwhelming subject, so I don't want to overwhelm you, but I do want to like, really motivate you to do stuff. So I'm going to just tell you the most recent findings and then tell you what you can do. Um, this week, hot off the press, the New York Times actually has done two major studies, uh, major reports, and we have some extra copies. We don't have hundreds, but you can take, take some that showed uh, conclusively that radioactivity levels are much higher than anybody thought in this gas drilling waste. And we're talking about Pennsylvania. So 1.3 billion gallons of this gas drilling waste has already been created in Pennsylvania. Most of it discharged to our rivers and streams everywhere else in the state except here. Um, so it's terrible for our neighbors. Um, the radioactivity is 100 to 1,000 times as high as the level should be for safe drinking water. Um, and they're not requiring the drinking water intakes to test for radioactivity. So people are really shocked by this. Front page news in the New York Times. The follow-up story also showed that the industry, you saw all those guys who were, you know, powerhouse men with a lot of money. Um, the industry has a lot of money, it's not just men, <laughs> just people with a lot of money who are trying to fight any laws that would be more protective. So they successfully defended an attempt in Pennsylvania to get them regulated that would have required the gas drilling waste to be tracked from where it's created to where it's dumped. So because gas drilling is exempt, it is not required to be tracked. So that means that if a truck dumps it by the side of the road, and there's a lot of photos and videos, YouTube videos, things that people take of trucks dumping this toxic waste, then there's no way of proving it because they've lobbied so successfully. So I'll leave it at that for your update, and let's get on to the what you can do, because um, hopefully you're a little upset uh, and angry if you are really 
um, kind of taking in this news. And what we want you to do is 